so. Good morning, everybody. Early start today. Oh, darkness. <laughs> okay. Try again. Good morning, everybody. Uh, early start today, 4.30. Leaving the house just after 4.30 in the morning. But that's... The way it is. First stop, Eskisterna, Ford dealership. Leave my pickup to be serviced and to have the tires changed and whatever you while I'm away in Thailand. Then a quick taxi to the station and then it will be a train to Stockholm and then the train from Stockholm to the airport. And we're on our way to Thailand. Let's go. Thank you. 
are Norwegian. Please may we have your attention while we demonstrate the safety features of this Boeing 787 Dreamliner aircraft. All hand luggage located on the floor must be placed under the seat in front of you or in the overhead vents. To avoid blocking the aisles or exits, please store all hand luggage in the overhead locker or beneath the seat in front of you. If you are seated in a front row, please keep these areas clear during takeoff and landing. To fasten your seatbelt, insert the flat metal tip into the buckle and tighten. So, unfortunately, technical difficulties meant that I have no more video footage, only stills. So, I'm going to finish this video by showing a few stills and giving you a little summary of my thoughts regarding Norwegian and their long haul service. Norwegian are a budget airline, but the, uh, the service is very good for a budget airline. Um, and I've flown with them a lot of times within Europe, within Sweden. And um, the longest flight that wasn't a long haul flight uh, before I f flew to Bangkok was to Malaga from Stockholm, which is about a four and a half hour flight. And um, yeah, I, I always thought Norwegian was. was pretty good um, personnel wise very good uh, on the Bangkok flights the personnel were all Thai and uh, very friendly very helpful um, the aircraft was a new 787 Dreamliner um, Dreamliners themselves I find to be cramped um, I would rather fly on a 777 or an A380 but okay the Dreamliner is what it is. Um, it wasn't the worst experience I've ever had on a Dreamliner for being cramped. That, I think, award goes to Qatar Airways with their in-flight entertainment uh, boxes under the seat in front of you. So you've got half a leg room missing uh, or foot room. Um, but otherwise, yeah, the Norwegian service was pretty good, really. And the flight was, the, the plane, the aircraft was, was very good. Luckily for me, I wasn't as cramped as I might have been because I managed to sit next to the only empty seat on the whole flight so that was rather good um, service wise there was a drink service um, before the meal a complimentary drink um, I took a Heineken to um, have with my dinner um, and um, I had a, a bottle of water to drink uh, from the bar service that you have to pay for um, apart from your complimentary drink with your meal. Um, that works like this. You order and pay for everything in your screen in the um, in your home in your in-flight entertainment system, and uh, you order in the screen, pay with your credit card, and the person I will deliver to your seat uh, your order if you want to be uh, or you want a snack or whatever. And that worked out pretty well, and I had about three beers and a bottle of water, and it cost me about £14 uh, sterling, 145 Swedish krona, something like that, 15 euros. Um, and that was, that was okay. It was not a problem with that. Um, the meal itself was small but tasty. The entree course, the starter, was boring. Uh, a few sticks of penne pasta with some kind of dressing sauce um, as far as pasta salads go it was probably one of the most boring I've ever eaten not that I'm a big fan of pasta salads but yeah but the main course was good it was some uh, stewed beef mashed potatoes vegetables um, and there was a cake pie um, dessert afterwards and a cup of coffee to wash that down um, unfortunately no bread and butter and things like that uh, but the meal was okay, if not a little bit small. Um, I packed some snacks and cakes and biscuits and all sorts with me, so I'm not expecting to be filled by a, an in-flight meal at the best of times, but obviously I was expecting less with the Norwegian flight, although the quality of the meal was, yeah, it was absolutely okay. Uh, the breakfast, however, was rather small and a bit boring a, um, a small pre-packed sandwich a biscuit a carton of apple juice and a choice of tea or coffee um, 
and that was about it nothing very exciting with the breakfast options but again uh, you know what you're getting um so to sum up norwegian um i would recommend norwegian absolutely um unfortunately i couldn't fly direct from stockholm to bangkok at the time i flew because it's out of the high season they normally fly um a couple of times a week directly from stockholm to uh, to bangkok in the high season um i think in the high high season they fly fly three or four times a week uh, and in the low season they're not flying directly from stockholm only from copenhagen and oslo so i was um that meant i had to take a flight to oslo first and a five hour wait in oslo and then the flight from oslo to um, to bangkok which made it a long journey um although if i flew directly from stockholm with norwegian i would have said it would have been very nice so i would definitely use them on the direct routes i would probably unless it's a really good price and i'm really trying to save money probably not go and sit in oslo airport for another five hours again but on the whole i would definitely recommend norwegian so there you have it i'm um, sorry about the uh, the shambles of not having any video footage at the end of that uh, video but i hope you enjoyed it anyway and i hope it's given you a little bit of an insight into flying to bangkok with norwegian airways thanks for watching